Yo, what is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Um, please comment, share, like, subscribe if any of this is resonating for you. Um, yeah, it's definitely concerning what is going on around us, but just know that we need to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus during these times, okay? Um... If you're not a part of a church, a community, I please, 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 I encourage you guys to get plugged in. I know a lot of different pastors, a lot of different brothers and sisters in the Lord who can get you plugged in, okay? Um, yeah, so anyways, um, just interesting, amazing things actually that the Lord has been, um, doing just in this past week for me, um, all, you know, serious praise reports. So thank you guys for your continued prayer. Um, I know that it is hard some days. <laughs> it really is, but, um, we need to keep our eyes focused. We need to be focused on the kingdom and um, whatever the Lord is putting in front of us, okay? Whatever that looks like for you guys, because we all have our individual missions, okay? Um, so, a lot of stuff about famine, guys, and I'm not trying to be, like, super cryptic or anything like that, but one of me... More, one of my buds was talking about how this is not only going to be a famine of, like, um, actual food, but just of, um, I don't, I mean, God's presence even. <laughs> so, um, it's very important that we are soaking in God's word. We are really digging in deeper to spend time with the Lord. Um, if you don't know the Lord yet, I encourage you to pick up a Bible, start reading his word, and praying that he speaks to you, okay? This is not going to get any better, and I know a lot of people are trying to solve these problems um, simply by putting a band-aid on things, but, um, you know, and they have, you know, you'll see people with these 10-step programs, 12-step programs, whatever they are, and they're not effective. They never work. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that first hand. Um, yeah, I tried everything before, uh, the Lord found me. So <laughs> yeah, it is, um, by the grace of God that we are here right now. And, um, I just praise him that his mercies are new every single morning and we get to fellowship with him. So yeah, upcoming, um, we really need to be clinging to Jesus, his word, um, yeah, and praying for others to um, be saved, you know, praying for their salvation. Um, okay, so I wanted to read you guys. I feel like this is really important to talk about, you know, being in the Spirit, being in step with the Spirit, um, and what exactly does that all look like. So I am going to read from my favorite chapter in the Bible. <laughs> Um, they're all great though, but, um, Paul the Apostle is like my super favorite. Um, of course the Lord is like number one, but yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to start reading that. <laughs> uh, Romans chapter eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous, righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, 
Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Amen. I'm going to read on here. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Beautiful, God's church, um, bride of Christ. So, I'm going to read on. This is so amazing. Uh, I might read this whole chapter, actually. It's so good. So, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And Paul the Apostle went through a lot of suffering. Um, if you haven't read about him, yeah, he went through a lot. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Sorry. I got some allergies going on, I guess. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which could not be uttered. I don't know why I'm smiling right now. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together. For good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. More, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Sorry. Dang it. Whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Uh -huh. I can't see. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him us up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Sorry. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Whoa. <laughs> Hopefully that hit home for some of you guys, because wow. That's like my favorite chapter in the Bible. It's like super amazing. Um... Yeah, let's just be in prayer for one another, guys. Um, 
yeah, the world is kind of going crazy. And it, I mean, it continues to. <laughs> what can you do? Um, but praise God, we are not, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Um, and we do need to be praying uh, for for God's people, we need to be praying that, um, you know, the, the harvest is, um, how does it go? The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few, the laborers are few, something like that. Um, sorry, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, we need to get out there and, um, whatever God has put before us, we need to go at it one step at a time. Okay. Um, be reaching out and, um, extending your influence where you can. And yeah, hit me up, hit, hit, hit me up, guys, <laughs> if you need prayer for anything. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I love you guys so much, and I will see y'all later.